Oh, let's just do this. Just doing it. <laughs> Absolutely starving, but I don't care. I just want to do it. So, here is my random variable. The number of independent trials until the first success, so just a generic random variable. Hopefully, if you've been studying any kind of probability, you know what this is. This is the geometric random variable. So, n is distributed geometric. The only parameter here is p. p is the probability of success. So, there's only really a couple things I want to lay out here. One is the um, cumulative distribution function the survival function, and then also the memory list property of the geometric distribution. Next video, I'm going to do a, a nice example the, to utilize these things, and we can take care of the, the problem quite efficiently once I know these things. So uh, let's just deal with the cumulative distribution function first. Okay, so uh, what if I want to know, um, I'm going to use this notation. Okay. So this is capital P sub X of X. And well, I guess you can't really see this as capital P, but I want this to be the CDF. Okay, I'm looking at CDF. Cumulative di distribution function. And that will be apparent actually even if after I write this. So what is the probability? Uh, and this is not even my random variable. My random variable is N. So that's okay. Let's change that to an n. And let's change that to a little n. All right. So what is the probability that n is less than or equal to n? All right. Um, well, maybe I, before I actually write this, why don't, what is actually the uh, PMF, the mass function? The probability mass function is the following. Pn of n is equal to, if I want the number of independent trials until the first success, okay, if there are n trials until the first success, that means there were n minus 1 failures, those have probability 1 minus p, and so my first success, which has probability p, so p times 1 minus p to the n minus 1. So there's my mass function. I want the probability that n is less than or equal to n. So I want the cumulative distribution function. So this is equal to, okay, well, it must be a sum from, and I'm going to change the indices here. I'm going to go from k equals uh, 1 to n. And by the way, uh, n starts at 1 here, right? n starts at 1. Okay? So that's why I'm starting at, at 1 here. So. And then I just implement uh, the probability mass function. So p times 1 minus p uh, to the k minus 1. Why on earth would this be called the geometric distribution? Hmm, I wonder. Because this is basically a geometric sum. So you can think of this as a geometric series, finite. This is, think of this if you want, a geometric sequence if I look the term. So, of course, geometric, right? All right, so right here, I just want to compute this. And I'm just going to use uh, the formula you should all know for the, uh, the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sum. Okay, so uh, what is this? This is going to be equal to the first term. When I plug in k equals 1, I get p. So the first term times 1 minus the common ratio. The common ratio is 1 minus p. 1 minus p raised to what power? This can always throws me off with a finite sum. It's always going to be one more than when I plug in the upper bound. So the upper sum amp here, if I plug in n there, is n minus 1. It's always going to be one more than that. I always get confused about that. That's the way I, it helps me remember. Okay, so one, uh, the first term times 1 minus the common ratio raised to the n power divided by 1 minus the common ratio. 1 minus the common ratio. Simplify. What does this give you? This gives you 1 minus 1 minus p to the n. Right? I mean, everything cancels, right? 1 minus 1 is 0. The p's are gone, so this is gone. Right? So I get that. 
this is my CDF. Okay, so this is my CDF. So therefore, um, kind of annoying notation. Looks just like that. I meant this to be the CDF. So the CDF, so the CDF is the probability n is less than or equal to n is equal to this, right? So one minus one minus d to the n. Okay, again, we're assuming the probability uh, of success is p. What is the survival function? The survival function which it's just one minus the CDF. It has this S sub N, right? This is just the complement of this. So this is just probability that N is greater than N. This is a bit nicer, but just to take one minus the CDF, this is just one minus P uh, to the N. All right, so I needed both of those because now I want to talk about uh, the memory list property. Uh, I've seen this written a few different ways um, in various textbooks. Um, I prefer, well, I guess it depends on the question, but um, the question, the example I'm going to give you in the next video is uh, utilizing the memory list property um, in a specific way. So I'm going to utilize uh, the CDF or survival function. Well, you'll see. Okay, so let's write that down. So the memory list property. I'm not going to write on a statement. I'm just going to show the result. So just go through the computation. I'm basically going to prove the memory list, memory list, memory list property, um, and then we'll write down the result. So memory list. And after I write, uh, show you the statement I'm particular concerned with, let's talk about the memory list property. Why is it called that? For instance, right? So I want to look at um, I want to look at what is the probability uh, that my random variable n, uh, the number of independent trials on the first success, is greater than or equal to. I'm just going to use for lack of better variables. I mean, it's just annoying all the letters. So I'm just going to use x and y. So x plus y, given that n uh, is greater than or equal to uh, y. What's the probability that uh, the number of trials is greater than x plus y, given it's already greater than y? See the definition? Now the definition uh, for the conditional probability, this is the probability that n is greater than or equal to x plus y, and n is and n is greater than or equal to y. If n is greater than or equal to y and it's greater than or equal to x plus y, it must be basically greater than or equal to x plus y. So hopefully you can see why that is. Divided by the probability that n uh, is greater than or equal to y. Hopefully you can see now where I'm going to use this. Now I need the survival function. Okay, So this is equal to, uh, this is now equal to, what is the probability that n is greater than or equal to x plus y? Greater than or equal to x plus y. Well, you have to be careful. This is a discrete random variable. This is a strict inequality. Uh, this is a uh, including. This is including. So I can also say, let me just write this next to it. This is the same thing as saying the probability that n is strictly greater than x plus y minus 1 divided by the probability that n is strictly greater than y minus 1. Right, these, these mean the same thing. So, <coughs> that being said, uh, that being said, what can I say from here? I'm just going to use the formulation of the survival function uh, in these two instances right here. So we're pretty much there, right? Top one, the numerator, is going to be 1 minus p to what power? To the x plus y minus 1. Okay, to the x plus y minus 1. This is 1 minus p to the 
x plus y minus 1 divided by, down below, again, use the survival function. This is 1 minus p to the y minus 1. Okay, well, I'm dividing two exponential expressions. The base is 1 minus p. They have the same base. Subtract the exponents. What do you get? Uh, you get this. You get this is equal to uh, 1 minus p raised to the x. So what is this? This is the probability. I want to write it in terms of a, a, a greater than or equal to inequality. This is the probability uh, that m is strictly greater than x. In other words, this is equal to the probability, let me write it this way, this is the probability uh, that m is greater than or equal to x plus 1, x plus 1. So that is the formulation that I want to use in my next example. So I'll, I'll, I'll sort of gather my result over here next to my other results from memory list. Memory list property. Okay, what does it say? It says uh, that we have that the probability that n is greater than or equal to a sum given that n is greater than or equal to y is equal to the probability that n is greater than or equal to x plus 1. Don't forget the plus 1 there. So I have basically uh, these three things, in important uh, aspects regarding the geometric distribution. Just real quick, uh, why is this called the memoryless property? Basically, we're saying if the number of trials um, are already exceed, uh, say, a number y, then what's the probability that they exceed x plus y? Trials. So say they exceed 5, what's the probability they exceed 10? Well, they already exceed 5. Basically, all we need to compute is the probability they exceed 6. Less or greater than or equal to 6. Okay. That sounds a little bit confusing, but hopefully that makes sense. Now that takes care of this property. Next video, I'll do an example. All right.